Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome Mr. Shahbuddin Ahmed for the webinar of Overview of Process Plan Design and Project Execution. Before starting the webinar, I would like to give a brief introduction about our expert. Mr. Shahbuddin Ahmed is a chemical engineer with around 20 years of experience in the field of process plant operation, technical services, quality control, process plant design, environmental engineering, and process safety for various industries. He is currently working as Deputy General Manager with Projects and Development India Limited at Vadodara. He has done B.Tech in Chemical Engineering from Haldia Institute of Technology and M.Tech from Jadapur University in 2005. He has worked as Senior Project Engineer and Development Consultant as an assistant engineer with IFCO, Paradeep, as a process engineer at Delco Laboratories, Kolkata, and as a development engineer at Hindi Labor, Campus Limited. He has also worked as a guest faculty at the School of Environmental Studies, Jadapur University, Kolkata, and at the Department of Biotechnology, Calcutta University, Kolkata. His areas of expertise include process plant design, QRA and HAZOP study, EIA and EMP study feasibility study for various industries. So I would like to welcome Sir again from the behalf of Chemical Engineering Department, Power Institute of Technology, and I would like to hand over the session to our expert. We welcome you, sir. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you, Shivam, uh, for the introduction. And this topic I have selected uh, especially for the students who are uh, uh, in the final year or the pre-final year of chemical engineering. The basic, basic purpose of this topic is that the, to understand the overall scope of a project, chemical engineering project. Most of the time I have uh, seen in my uh, during taking interview for uh, new candidates in my organization, I have observed that in most of the cases, the chemical engineers, when they are fresh graduate from the university of institutes, they do not have do not have the overall idea of a uh, process plan design project. They know how to uh, do the design calculation. They know how to do the uh, process design under guidance of some uh, supervisor supervisor but they don't have the overall concept of designing a process plan and also to collaborate with uh, other disciplines like mechanical engineers civil engineers electrical engineers instrumentation engineers due to lack of knowledge of the overall project so my purpose is that to elaborate the overall scope of the project and second thing is that the basic concept of process design. That means uh, whatever you have learned in, in, the, in uh, your academic institute and whatever you are delivering during your professional career are entirely different because you have learned, you have gathered some knowledge from the institute. That is the recipe. That is nothing but the recipe. But you have to cook. Uh, in the practical field. And for this cooking, you need other uh, machineries, other uh, knowledge, other experience, other support. So that is being done in the uh, industry. That means you have to build up your skill and expertise so that you can prove yourself that you are entirely a good chemical engineer and you are fit for the industry. Let me proceed. The key points which I have summarized is that uh, what is the chemical process that I will just explain. Then uh, what is the chemical process plant? What are the process variables? Different types of chemical process plant. What is process engineering? What are the components of process plant design project? Pre-project activities. That means when the project has, all, has not yet been started. That means there is no construction, no design, nothing. At that time, some kind of studies are to be performed to understand the project. 
the mode of execution of project different stages of project engineering and brief overview of tendering process and site related activities and some other aspects also i will explain one by one see the diagram shows that it is the anatomy of a chemical process i have taken the reference from colson richardson volume 6 if you look at this diagram then you will understand that it is basically a block flow diagram type representation this is basically the overall scope of a chemical plan that means what are the facilities and what are the stages that has to be overcome that has to be uh, one by one executed for uh, st for starting a design and up to the final production it is that's why the chemical process is defined as any activity involving the use storage manufacture handling or movement of hazardous chemicals or combination of these activities say the first stage that describes the raw material storage that means if you have to manufacture some, something you need some raw materials whatever whatever you are going to manufacture you have you must have the uh, storage of raw materials the storage of raw materials that is also done based on some guideline you cannot store the hazardous chemical you cannot store the oil or gases anywhere in this uh, on the land so what you have to do you have to store in some tanks or in some vessels and you have to maintain some safety distances between the storage vessels or storage tanks so these are the criteria which you have to follow during storage of materials so when you are storing this material definitely you have to handle this material for mixing for blending some other additives or transporting this material to the other location so for example when you have stored this particular uh, raw materials then you have to again it is it has to be used for the feed preparation in the feed preparation then also you have to add some chemicals some additives may be there some heating can be done there are some other alternative options may be there after that the actual reactor the reaction which is being taking place in a particular vessel and after that the product separation a part of the product can be also recycled or um, back to the feed and then some by products may also be generated from this uh, product separation loop and that can also be used by some other by product industries or any downstream processing definitely if uh, there is a uh, chemical process any production unit is operating then there may be some kind of waste which is being generated from this chemical process so it is also the responsibility of a chemical engineer to recommend suitable waste disposal or waste recovery process because whenever there are some waste that waste may create some environmental pollution so to minimize that environmental pollution so we have to think about some alternative process otherwise we have to reuse this waste or to recycle the waste or to treat this particular waste so that we can safely dispose to the environment and nowadays for this purpose in most of the industries minimum discharge or zero discharge uh, concept is being implemented so that nothing can be discharged outside this boundary of the process plant then product storage and after that it is ready for sale chemical process plan a chemical process plan is an industrial process plan that manufactures or otherwise process chemicals usually on a large scale the general objective of a chemical plant is to create new material wealth through the chemical or biochemical transformation and or separation of materials just in the previous slide what we have discussed that the anatomy of the chemical process plant this is the actual definition that means it need not necessary that the chemical process plant means always there is a chemical reaction it may also be uh, 
a type of storage and handling plan because when we are storing some uh, hazardous chemical at a particular location then also it is a part of chemical plant and also transporting the plant that is also part of that chemical plant then major process in a chemical plant that we can just divide in three major categories the first one is that application of basic unit operation of chemical engineering because whenever you were uh, working with some uh, chemical processes you are designing some chemical plant definitely the unit operations are the most important part that are being useful for designing a chemical plant then application of reaction process involving raw materials to finished products storage and handling of hazardous chemicals these are the three main criteria of a chemical plant the process variables which are commonly used during uh, process design for a chemical plant are mainly flow rate pressure temperature level composition phases time whenever we are operating a chemical plant then also we have to monitor this particular process variables during the uh, for for various controlling of the temperature for controlling of the pressure for taking necessary action whenever the pressure or temperature or whatever product is more than the set value so these are the process variables which always a chemical engineer has to monitor has to use for design of chemical process plant the broad classification of process plants that can be done in this ways that application of basic unit operation of chemical engineering application of reaction uh, process involving raw material to finished products storage and handling of hazardous chemicals because these are types of chemical uh, plants which most of the time we have to uh, work uh, for designing for operation for other aspects even during the safety studies process hazard analysis also we have to deal with this kind of chemical processes different types of process plants uh, also includes the manufacturing industry uh, involving chemical reaction and formation of new product from raw materials it can be uh, biochemical industry also it can be pharmaceutical industry also it can be pulp and paper industries also any kind of industries wherever the chemical reaction is taking place and the raw materials and the storage and handling of hazardous chemicals are taking place that can be included in the process plants categories storage and handling of hazardous chemicals such as storage and handling of dispatch of petroleum products like gasoline uh, that means petrol diesel kerosene etc these are the downstream from the re refinery because uh, from refinery the uh, after distillation this gasoline diesel kerosene lpg propane butane all these things are coming out and these are also stored in some places and these are called storage terminals and from there after some uh, blending uh, or some additives uh, being added uh, this product is again transported to the other locations for the customer the storage handling and dispatch of liquefied petroleum gases like propane butane propylene lpg etc import of petroleum products involving liquid and gases mixing blending of liquid gases even storage and handling of liquid crude oils oil and gas terminals chemical handling plant raw water treatment plant because these are these are parts of uh, utilities and offsites these are also part of chemical process plant because the unit operations the reaction chemistry all these things are being used and applied in this particular process plants now what is the definition of process engineering because when you will be working as a chemical engineer in industry or in any consulting organization or any design industry then your profile will be as a process engineer then what is process engineering it focuses on the 
डिजाइन ऑपरेशन कंट्रोल ऑप्टिमाइजेशन एंड इंटेंसिफिकेशन ऑफ केमिकल एंड बायोकेमिकल प्रोसेसेस इट एनकम्पासेस ए भास्ट रेंज ऑफ इंडस्ट्री सच एस केमिकल पेट्रोकेमिकल एग्रीकल्चर मिनरल प्रोसेसिंग एडवांस मेटेरियल फूड फार्मास्यूटिकल सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट एंड बायोटेक्नोलॉजी इंडस्ट्रीज सो द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ प्रोसेस इंजीनियरिंग इज ए वास्ट एरिया दैट मीन्स इट कवर्स ऑलमोस्ट ऑल काइंड ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज सो योर जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटी योर एक्सपर्टाइज कैन बी प्रूफ इन ऑल दिस काइंड ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज एज ए प्रोसेस इंजीनियर the types of process plant design project can broadly be classified in two types one is grain fill project because uh, uh, it is basically it starts from the grass root that means there is a vacant land nothing is there nothing is constructed nothing you have to build up a chemical plant or you have to develop a storage terminal you have to develop a lpg uh, import terminal whatever you want to develop there so this will be part of green field project new concepts along with latest standards and regulations are implemented in case of green field project because your scope is open when the project is green field because you can recommend any kind of engineering aspects you can apply any kind of latest standards guidelines uh, regulations or guidelines whatever it is because it is a green field project your concept will be developed by yourself you can develop your own concept and start designing this uh, project for brownfield project the scope is limited because the first of all the plant has already been constructed may maybe that it is already constructed uh, more than 10 years back or 20 years back whatever it is but at that time the uh, guidelines the standards the uh, those those were not available which are which are at present available so what you have to do you have to implement the latest standards and guideline based on the feasibility that means first you have to do the adequacy study that means whether this plant is adequate for the latest uh, for applying the latest standards or guidelines or it is compatible with the latest uh, engineering standards uh, latest government norms uh, based on that we have to modify the plant or there may be some other reason for modification that means you have some increased demand of the product that means you have to increase the production so if you have to increase the production definitely you have to add some other units now say there is one unit one reactor one heat exchanger and one uh, working and one standby pumps are available so if you have to increase the production then same thing you have to duplicate so first advantage is that when you are working with the green field project you have some references because you have already a basis that means the plant has already been constructed you have the data from the existing plant so that you can use and you have to check whether this data are adequate or not whether the pump is sufficient to deliver that kind of flow rate whether the line size that mean pipeline diameter is adequate for uh, adding another new pump that means if the flow rate is increased then definitely the velocity will be increased if the line size is fixed so at that time you have to increase the velocity increase the line size otherwise you have to optimize so there is a question of optimization so in case of brownfield project the experience should be in that way that means you have to use your expertise from the previous uh, concept that means which concept was implemented long before and what is the concept now it is applicable for this new plan so comparing these two things you have to summarize that what are the applicable uh, norms and guidelines accordingly you have to meet the target production and meet the target uh, deadline to understand the uh, overall scenario of a process plan uh, first you have to understand the plot plan because if it is a uh, vacant land or it is a already the plant is constructed whether it is a brownfield or greenfield whatever it is 
the basic design starts from the top plan because first you have to survey the land that means uh, surveyor will do the survey uh, they will uh, generate some topographical map and with the with the available coordinates that means the location and the coordinates is uh, generated from this survey and based on that and based on the shape of the land that means the area of the land you have to locate the facilities on that particular land so this is the overall just a general structure general view of the plot plan is it may be different for different type of industries and uh, uh, different type of projects even it depends upon the uh, customers requirement that means your client uh, clients requirement if they have only uh, small area of lands so they have to optimize but definitely in all cases you have to meet the uh, standards and guidelines uh, which are being used in the industries so in the on the top of this uh, land if you see that there is a railway siding that means the railway siding can be used for uh, incoming or outgoing of products that means they uh, in, uh, to, to uh, receiving the raw materials or to dispatching the product to other location there is a tank farm the tank farm is basically uh, it contains a dike wall that means the tanks are located at different places and there is a dike wall the dike wall is necessary because if the tank there is a rupture or catastrophic rupture may occur there may be some damage in the uh, tank there may be leakage or any kind of things are there so at that time what happens this dike will contain the entire quantity of this hazardous chemical it will not allow to move outside there are some uh, plant area expansion that means in, in future if expansion may take place that's why this block has been kept that means the facilities will be uh, located in future there may be there is another plant area maybe there there may be some other expansion the pipe bridge because pipe we have to uh, take over the bridge because there uh, some pipes are laid in the underground some pipe uh, may be laid on the ground with a on a pedestal and some uh, pipes may be uh, laid over the pipe rack or pipe bridge there may be culverts also if there is a road crossing then definitely you have to uh, use some culvert then plant utilities there is another block then fire station emergency water workshop stores these all utilities are also placed that means if you divide this particular plant area there is one part that is called licensed area where the hazardous chemicals are being stored and another area which are non licensed area that means this area the non licensed area this contain the non hazardous chemicals and safely we can uh place the workshops we can place the uh, admin building we can place the canteen although the entire terminal enter uh, uh, chemical plant definitely should be protected from fire hazards because no fire uh, no, no ignition source of ignition is uh, allowed within this uh, process plant because you have to minimize the chances of fire although there is fire fighting equipments are at place there are uh, uh, hydrant lines surrounding this uh, plant there are other fire fighting equipments even the uh, the workers or the operators they are trained for fighting uh, with fire all these things are at place still it is recommended that the non license area and license area should be separated and uh, no electronic equipments or anything are permitted within this plant so this is the process plan from the pro, uh, plot plan what what we are getting as a process engineer as a process engineer your purpose is that you have to see that the location of this tank say uh, you are having your 
pumps uh, at this location so for example this is your pump house at this location you have your pump house that means pumps are placed at this location and the pipes are coming following a particular route and the product is being transferred from one tank to the other tank or uh, from the this tank to the railway wagon or it is being received from the railway wagon and being filled within this tank so what you have to do you have to do the hydraulic calculation that means you must know the uh, length of the pipeline from one facility that means from source to the destination that means uh, from at the suction side of the pump you have to calculate the length of the pipeline at the discharge side of the pump you have to calculate the length of the pipeline and based on that you can do the pressure drop calculation using the standard equations or any software and based on that you can calculate the pump npsh net positive suction head available and also you can calculate the pump differential head and based on that you can design the pump similarly for other aspects also you need the location of individual facilities for water services also there may be a water treatment plant so you you have to know that where this plant is located and how this raw water is coming and how this treated water is being transferred to the service buildings so the plot plan will give you a clear picture your basis for further designing that means basic engineering should start from this plot plan this is called onion diagram for the process synthesis i have taken this from a reference book chemical engineering design principles practices and economics of plant and process design g tauler arsino if you see look at this uh, diagram it is clear that uh, the heart of the process plant is reactor that means it is the innermost part of the process plant after that what are there the other layer the second layer says that separation and recycle system the product is being formed in the inner layer that means the reactor is basically uh, creating some new product and after that these products are separated or recycled back to the system if it is a exothermic reaction there is chances of heat generation so you have to recover this heat from the uh, product so that the reaction forward reaction becomes faster so there may be some heating or cooling and utilities because cooling water boiler all these things are required so these are coming another layer after that the last layer is that the water and effluent treatment because the raw water is required the the raw water is required for the uh, drinking purpose it is required uh, for the service water it is re required for the for as a process water and the effluent it uh, it may contain the uh, industrial effluent as well as the biological effluent is that means uh, generated from the canteen generated from the toilets so you have to treat this effluent liquid effluent gaseous effluent solid waste whatever it is that has to be treated and proper disposal has to be done so this gives the overall picture of a chemical process plant now let us start with the uh, components of process plant design projects basically this uh, this part this part will give you the uh, overall scope of a process engineer and the other team members of the chemical process plant now let us start with the process design part that means what are the scopes of a process design uh, process engineers in a chemical design chemical plant design project the first activity which is done uh, once the plot plan is prepared and having some basic idea of the location of the various activities and various uh, facilities then we can start with the process design basis this process design basis it is nothing but a document which contains the uh, basic parameter basic parameter for designing a chemical plant for example if you have to design a chemical plant first what you require you have to 
look at the IMD data, that means the climatological data, what is the temperature, ambient temperature, ambient uh, atmospheric pressure, uh, what about the uh, other climatic conditions, that means the humidity and other things. So that you have to, you have to note down at a particular place. You have to know the seismic uh, condition of the location uh, and the uh, mean sea levels. So all these data are mentioned in the process design basis. This is the first part. The second part is that you have to prepare a write-up. You have to prepare a write-up for the overall uh, process of the plan. That means a brief write-up. That means that is called process description. So that is also part of this process design basis. A separate document can be prepared as a process description, but the process design should contain a brief write-up on the process description. After that, there comes the basis for the process design. That means whenever you are designing a chemical plant, so for example, you are doing the hydraulic calculations. So if you are doing the hydraulic calculations or line sizing, then definitely there should have some velocity criteria because the velocity at pump suction site, velocity at pump discharge site, velocity in the suction header, velocity in the discharge header are entirely different. So there are different criteria. You cannot apply the same velocity criteria from the, for the suction side or for the discharge side. So it should be men mentioned in a tabular format. So this is the velocity criteria and these are the governing scenario that we have to follow for this. So that if you prepare the design basis in a thorough way, then what is the benefit in the entire life cycle of the project? Whenever there is any kind of modification, any kind of questions are arised by any kind of person, even the question can be arised from the client side also, from the customer also, they can ask this some question. Even the, uh, during the hazard study, during the review on the PNID, some uh, other external uh, expert, they can also ask that what is the basis of this design. Then you can immediately produce this design basis. Also, the utilities, the uh, cooling water requirement, nitrogen requirement, and any other requirements that are also mentioned in the process design. It is a complete document. Uh, then, block flow diagram. Block flow diagram is the simplest part of this. Uh, that means it, it gives the uh, just a skeleton, just a skeleton of this uh, chemical plant in terms of block. You need not uh, draw the uh, symbol of the equipment because if there is a heat exchanger, you can just draw a block also. If there is a uh, reactor, you can just draw a block also. So in block flow diagram, it is just the process steps are mentioned. That means the first step is, say, storage and handling. The second step is the reaction. This uh, third step is separation. So you can just mention these steps and in this way, the uh, is ordinary person, anyone can understand that this is the overall uh, structure of this chemical plant. Then process and utility flow diagram. One is called PFD, process flow diagram, and another one is called UFD, that is utility flow diagram. The process and utility, these are more or less similar, although we have given to, to different terminology, Process basically it is related to the hazardous chemical mostly. Say you are uh, uh, working with a refinery or any petrochemical industries or a petroleum products. In that case, if the line contains the gasoline line or any uh, diesel line, so that is called process uh, flow diagram. That means this will contain the process flow part of this uh, plant. And the utility flow diagram means it, it will contain the service water network, it will contain the cooling water network, it will contain the nitrogen system, it will contain the uh, flare, flare network. These are all uh, the uh, utility flow, part of utility flow diagram. Then heat and mass balance. Heat and mass balance, it is done based on the process flow diagram. Because if we have to, if we have prepared a process flow diagram, so whenever the process flow diagram is prepared, then at individual location, you have to calculate the flow rate 
you have to calculate the process parameter that means pressure temperature flow rate concentration whatever parameters are applicable for that particular uh, chemical plant that we have to calculate using some number of equations the heat and mass balance is basically done using some empirical equations some simple equations also there and nowadays these are these are done using simulation softwares equipment list equipment list is will give us uh, overall idea of the equipments which are uh, necessary for procurement which are necessary for uh, uh, placing on the plot plan whenever the plot plan is finalized that means plot plan has been prepared in at that time the equipment list is also prepared <clears throat> that means the equipments uh, the tag numbers uh, the number of equipments that you have to finalize say for example uh, if we consider a process plant there are several number types of uh, equipments are available one particular type is storage tanks that means the above ground tanks underground tanks whatever is it is and some machinery equipments are there pumps compressors all these things and there can be some other equipments uh, reactors uh, all these things may be there so you have to categorize these are the equipments and for individual equipments we have to uh, define that how many uh, standby or sparing of equipments are required that means if one pump is required for the operation then at least there should be one standby if two pumps are working then one pump should be standby or if it is a critical system even you can consider 100% standby also that means two pumps are uh, working at the same time two pumps are standby so number of equipments working standby all these things are finalized during preparation of equipment list and the tag numbers of the equipments are assigned using some standard tag numbering philosophy it depends upon the uh, type of projects it depend upon the uh, organization that means the uh, design organization who, which are, who are performing this activities the project activities it depends upon them then hydraulic calculation and line sizing then piping and instrumentation diagram line schedule uh, line uh, pipe pnid is the most important part it contains the uh, control system it contains the line size line diameter all these things are available in the pnid and line schedule is just uh, comes after development of pnid it contains the line numbers corresponding to a particular line number we have to place the uh, operating conditions uh, the design conditions uh, all these things are mentioned in a tabular form these are line schedule then surge analysis uh, if it is required then surge analysis is performed uh, mm, that means maximum calculation of maximum surge pressure if the surge pressure exceeds the design pressure then obviously you have to provide some surge mitigation philosophy you have to adopt some surge mitigation philosophy or you have to reduce the surge pressure by using some method uh, so that the design pressure the should be more than the surge pressure this is typical block flow diagram as i was discussing discussing in the previous slide if you look at this block flow diagram you will understand that it represents the basic operations that means unit operations only the unit operations are written in the block and the incoming raw materials and the recycle and the product final product this is the simplest way you can see that this is the block flow diagram another example this is another example production of benzene yeah, similar you are just you can look at this diagram that only blocks are available simplest if, if you can draw this block flow diagram that then you will have a basic idea of the overall plant another block flow diagram st uh, steam reforming process and now this is process flow diagram so if you look at this process flow diagram see this is gradually what what, what we are seeing that we have 
in case of process flow diagram we have identified the streams that means in case of other block flow diagram see there is no stream number is assigned but in case of process flow diagram the equipment symbol is required you have to put the symbol you have to show these other utilities that means if there is a heat exchanger then the stream all these lines uh, shell side tube sides all these things have to be mentioned and also the stream numbers that means these are the streams 1 2 3 4 these are all stream numbers you have to mention and corresponding to the stream number we can calculate the stream summary in this format uh, if it is a small pfd then you can directly write this uh, values whatever mentioned in the tabular form that you can directly mention at this place also with some symbol so this is the process flow diagram then pnid this is a small example of the pnid which i have just uh, placed here you can understand that what is the pnid see this is uh, the uh, there are some control mechanisms what are the basic difference between pfd and pnid in case of pfd there is no controlling mechanism even the instruments are not mentioned in some cases we can put some instrument also we can put some uh, line size also in some special case but in in general in process flow diagram we do not place all these thing because these are not the pipeline these are basically the streams in case of pnid whatever we are showing here these are basically the piping and instrumentation diagram because the pipe line is coming the feed is coming through a pipe and within the pipe we have to put the valves that means there may be some manual valves some control valves are there in this case the feed a is coming to the system and when it is coming to the system then there is a flow transmitter this flow transmitter and after that there is a controller this controller is controlling using this control valve and the signal is also going to the dcs control panel and from there the operator who is sitting at the control room they can also monitor this controlling of this feed using this controller and they can see the uh, changes in the flow parameters from there and some alarm is also generated some action is being taken through this control mechanism another stream it is coming and also there is a flow transmitter and this control valve is operating using a controller and the level this is also being monitored by using two alarms one is high alarm another one is low alarm when the level is high uh, above a certain set value then the alarm will be generated immediately the operator will be cautious if the action is not taken then the interlock is activated and the signal is going to this control valve and this will be closed if the level is below that particular level hmm. and for the uh, in again the same thing for the cooling cooling mechanism the temperature element is used here and the temperature element using some temperature controller it can control the flow of this to this control valve that is the coolant flow will be controlled based on the temperature of the system so this control mechanisms and corresponding diagram this is part of this pnid even pnid will also give the line size it is not mentioned in this pnid because it is a part of the pnid so it is not mentioned over here but in a complete pnid the line number the uh, material of this particular pipeline that means it can be carbon steel it can be stainless steel whatever it is uh, this all these things are mentioned in the complete pnid once this part is developed that means pnid has been developed then the next activities are cause and effect matrix operation and control philosophy that means uh, this is basically a uh, description of the cause and effect matrix cause and effect matrix means if the pressure is high then what action will be taken if the temperature is low then what action will be taken so this you have to uh, maintain in a tabular form one side is cause another side is consequence and it is governed by some interlock so cause and effect matrix basically gives this kind of data and one can be uh, one one cause and effect matrix can be based on the dcs control another one can be based on the 
ESD. That means when there is some critical activities uh, taken place, the, you know, when the DCS control has already failed, at that time the uh, ESD will be activated and the entire plant can be on the shutdown mode. And the operation and control philosophy, this is based on the cause and effect matrix, which will give the entire description of the uh, process plan, how it is operated and how the control mechanism is being implemented. Fire and uh, gas map mapping, that means the hydrocarbon detectors, the firefighting equipments, how it is placed, where it is placed, all these things are shown on the plot plan. These are called fire and gas map mapping. This is done based on the dispersion modeling. Hazard and operability study. It is called HAJOP study. This is basically done on the uh, PNID and using the other uh, documents like cause and effect matrix, control philosophy, all these things uh, together are used uh, and the hazard and operability study is done. Uh, and based on that, the cause, consequence, safeguard, recommendations, all these things are noted. And based on, as, as the recommendations are noted, these recommendations are again uh, implemented in the next version of the PNID and uh, the hedge of close out report is being prepared. Uh, another uh, part is uh, quantitative risk assessment because the, the hazard, hazard study basically identifies the hazards and uh, the quantitative risk assessment, it is the uh, calculation, this mathematical calculation of the uh, risk. That means uh, based on some uh, types of hazards, it can be fire hazard, it can be toxic hazards, explosion hazard how much quantity of risk is calculated. And that also depends upon several number of parameters. So this is a particular uh, study is done. And based on the study, we can uh, draw the damage contour on the plot plan. That means if there is an explosion takes place, a fire hazard takes place, at to how much distance this damage will continue. And based on that, the disasters management, uh, which is called ERDMP, Emergency Response and Registrus Management Plan is prepared uh, for, uh, so that uh, when the accident takes place, the uh, rescue team can work accordingly. The hazardous area classification, it is done basically for uh, define the uh, type of uh, electrical apparatus or instruments to be uh, used for a hazardous chemical plant because uh, in this particular uh, classification, we uh, segregate the type of uh, locations. That means it can be zone zero, it can be zone one, two, different type of zone, depending upon the type of hazards can be generated from that particular area. And based on the facilities or any storage of hazardous chemicals, we can um, uh, put the demarcation on the plot plan with some dimensions. So based on that hazardous area classification, the electrical engineers, they have to decide that which part of the uh, chemical plant is safe area and which part of the chemical plant is hazardous area. Accordingly, they will choose whether flame proof or any special type of electrical apparatus are required or not. Process data sheets for equipments. Whenever the equipments are already sized, that means the sizing of equipments have already been done. That means the uh, calculations corresponding to the equipments have already been done. And after that, we have to prepare the equipment data sheets. It will contain the entire design parameters for the equipments and that will be used for uh, other uh, disciplines like mechanical engineers or any other disciplines. They will develop the their documents or uh, mechanical data sheets, all these things. Process data sheets for instruments, based on that, the instrument data sheets from the instrumentation department, they will prepare. Technical specification of package items, there may be some raw water treatment plant, there may be some vapor recovery system, there may be some uh, effluent treatment plants, sales treatment plants. So for all these package items, 
we have to prepare a technical specification it will give the entire design parameters and the design aspects the scope of the uh, package vendors that means uh, what kind of equipments what kind of machineries they have to supply they have to pr procure so based on that the other department they will prepare the tender now components of the process plan design project this mechanical design part as uh, the uh, entire uh, project entire design project uh, requires several number of discipline engineers so we have to uh, start from one particular team and then gradually the documents will be flowed or it will be to be shared to the other uh, discipline and they will work based on other documents so for example whenever the process design part has already been progressed in a certain level so some basic document has already been prepared parallelly the mechanical team they can also start activities like plant layout the plot plan plot plan is prepared by the mechanical team in consultation of the process team then piping layout it is prepared based on the pnid and other documents and the plot it is done on the plot plan itself the equipment layout it is it is prepared based on the uh, references from the other vendors and the process design then 3d model it is prepared it is done based on the piping layout and other inputs like pnids pipeline thickness calculation stress analysis mechanic these are all activities which are done by mechanical team but based on the process team but you have to know all these things because the uh, scope or requirement of other engineers that also you have to know as a process engineer unless and until you do, do not know do not have the idea that how uh, how you have to uh, deliver your uh, documents to the other uh, discipline engineers you will not be able to finish your activities within a scheduled time so that's why the interdepartmental coordination internal departmental dependency has also to be uh, known to other discipline engineers the instrumentation and control systems this is done in this way like selection of instruments technical specification instruments layout of control room uh, instrument cable layout system architecture details of control system vcs or plc tender documents so they are also again dependent on process team so at the end of the uh, this project you will understand that uh, the entire uh, design team whether it can be a mechanical team it can be a uh, instrumentation team it can be a civil team whatever they are all depending on the process team because the process design they starts from the fundamental and they develops the concept so the project starts from the process engineer and uh, they have to give the proper support proper uh, concept proper documents to the other discipline engineer so that the overall project can be can progress in a smooth manner there are some other aspects apart from this that is process hazard analysis and safety this is usually done by a separate team entirely separate team the project, uh, they they should not be involved in that project where the process team is working that means they are also process team the process team they are also process engineers this is also a profile of a process engineer to work as a pha or process safety engineer but the this process team that means this process safety engineer they should not be directly uh, attached with that project they will be they will work as a just like an auditor so this hajov and hajit lopa layer of uh, protection analysis fault tree analysis effect analysis then quantity risk assessment seal study safety integrated level study era study emergency uh, uh, response and disaster management plan all these things are done under pha and process safety this is quite important at this time because in most uh, you have see you have you have might be seen that uh, so many in so many chemical plants the accidents are taking place every year 
so the purpose of the process safety or process process hazard analysis is to minimize the chances of accident that means we have to design a safe chemical plant our purpose is that the production should be there but at the same time the safety must prevail the other parts these are also important for the overall project these are off sites and utilities that can also be done by a separate team apart from the main process team raw water treatment service water distribution effluent treatment collection and transportation of effluent sewage system design of sewage treatment plan and solid waste management civil and architecture they are basically uh, normally not so dependent on this uh, process team but in some aspects they are dependent that means the uh, utilities which are being designed by the process team these are also applicable for the civil engineering part and they are mostly dependent on the mechanical team because the uh, whenever there is a pipeline is being laid on the process plant then uh, what happens that it has to be uh, laid within a pedestal or on a pipe rack so the platform the foundations all these things are uh, designed by the civil team and also the sheds like uh, you have to place the pumps or compressor within a shed we cannot put in the open area so all these things are also done by design are done by the civil team and the admin building road drain culvert all these things are done by the civil engineering team electrical engineering electrical engineering this team is uh, dependent on process engineer uh, in the first part like the consumer list whenever they have to prepare this electrical consumer list they need the electrical load list the electrical load list is basically a document which gives the uh, calculated uh, absorbed power corresponding to the machinery items like you are uh, using a pump so definitely there is a motor and here you can calculate that what is the absorbed power based on the hydraulics that means the differential head efficiency uh, and density or specific gravity uh, based on all these parameters you can calculate the absorbed power and uh, also the uh, working standby whether you need emergency power or uh, that means dg or it it will it is a uh, continuous operation or intermittent operation this kind of informations are mentioned in electrical load list so based on electrical load list electrical team they prepare electrical consumer list this also includes the uh, electrical load corresponding to the service buildings and all other uh, general facilities and after that they prepare the single line diagram cable layout and uh, definitely when they are preparing this cable layout they are also dependent depending on mechanical team because the, the uh, basic input is the power plant uh, unless and until power plant is finalized they cannot start the cable layout and whenever they were they are doing the cable layout uh, and whenever the uh, civil team they are doing the road drain culvert the same thing they have to check with the uh, mechanical team whether there is a clashing Uh, between all these uh, activities because the cable should follow a particular route the piping that should follow follow a particular route and also the uh, road drain culvert that will follow a particular route so that for that purpose what we do we first prepare a tentative layout and after that the 3d modeling is done using software and using that 3d model you can clearly you can easily check the clashes and it can be rectified the fire safety team they are basically uh, preparing all these documents like fire water demand calculation for hydrant layout storage of water fire water fire protection system and uh, fire detection system another thing which is presently most important uh, because uh, we have to think about the alternative source of energy like uh, solar pv green building reuse and recycling of waste and green energy development there is a new additions for a chemical process plant 
Now, uh, what are the pre-project activities usually done for a particular chemical uh, design, chemical process plan design project? Uh, these are basically part of the pre-project activities for the approval to the ministry or to the higher authorities of the uh, owner or the investor. The pre-feasibility study, retail feasibility study, environmental clearance, approval from the statutory authority, state approval and no objection certificate. Unless and until these are done, we cannot proceed for the actual project execution. The pre-feasibility study, it concerns the following chapters like need for the project, why uh, you are going for this project, market study, uh, before starting uh, a project, you have to uh, st uh, study the market, that means whether the product is actually uh, has demand or not, uh, site selection, project description, environment aspects, overall cost estimate. This feasibility study, this part is basically done by a team of engineers from, uh, consisting of process engineer, mechanical engineers, and market survey team. And there are several discipline engineers are available for this pre-feasibility study and detailed feasibility study. And from this uh, DFR or PFR, that means pre-feasibility report or de-feasibility and feasibility report, we have a clear picture of the overall project and the budget. That means basic purpose is that we can uh, we can fix our budget. That means this is our budget and within that budget we have to invest. And based on this document, the investor, they can also uh, avail the uh, loan facility, loan, or any other uh, financial assistance from the banking sectors and also uh, they can take the approval from the ministry. Environmental clearance because unless and until the environmental clearance is done, the project uh, cannot be constructed because for a single uh, construction, and you need the environmental clearance. That means that there are some procedure that has to be followed, preparation of form one, screening, it can be applicable or not, and then scoping, preparation of draft EIA report, that means environmental impact assessment report, public consultation, and the final report. And they, these are all these activities are done by a specialized team. They are uh, NABED accredited because the consultant or the organization should have the NABED accreditation and that should be one at least one EIA coordinator and a number of functional area experts. And these are a good uh, uh, career prospect for chemical engineers or environmental engineers. Now the mode of execution of project, uh, let us uh, define some terminology which will be used. DEC, basically design engineering consultants, PMC, project management consultant, EPC, engineering procurement and construction, EPCM, engineering procurement and construction management, and LSTK is lump sum turnkey. So mode of execution, how to execute a particular project. So there are different type of execution mode. So we can define one by one. So one is that conventional mode. The conventional mode is basically, a, uh, it contains two part. One is uh, project engineering services, Another one is EPCM. That means the role of DEC, PMC, or EPCM. Because when the project is executed in a particular mode, then what will be the role of P, uh, project engineering services? What will be the role of the EPCM? And what will be the role of PMC? So broadly, we can classify that one project is executed in conventional mode. Another one is executed in elastic mode. In conventional mode means uh, these are the activities. That means the design engineering consultants, they have to start from the basic engineering. They will do the basic engineering. They will do the detail engineering. That means the entire designing of the chemical process plan has to be done by the design engineering consultant when the project is on conventional mode. That means the, the responsibility, the guarantee, all this thing has to be given by the design engineering consultant. So all these are the activities, the entire scope of design engineering activities up to the commissioning and the performance guarantee test 
uh, access 1040 statutory clearance and approvals are under the scope of design engineering consultant. But in case of EPC or elastic mode, the scope of design engineering team is different. In that case, we say that they are only PMC, that means project management consultants. The entire designing is done by the EPC. PMC will do what they will do. They will do the technology evaluation. They will do the licenses selection, front end engineering. That means the basic design, the part of the basic design will be done by the PMC. And that is for the tendering purpose. And they will select, they will select some LSTK contractor based on the tender. That means how the contractors are uh, quoting for a job and based on the tender evaluation, they will select the tender LSTK contractor and uh, they again will review the basic design package which is being done by this LSTK contractor. Retail engineering design which is done by the LSTK contractor. So PMC is basically the review and approval authority for the LSTK contractor. So the role of PMC in case of uh, detail LSTK or APC mode and the role of design engineering consultant the same person is working as a DAC. Just remember, the same person is working as a DAC in the uh, conventional mode, and the same person is working as a PMC in LSTK or APC mode, but the scope are entirely different. So you, that is the mindset of, because whenever you are working as a design consultant, or you are working as a process engineer in, a, in an organization design industry, then the scope first you have to understand the scope and accordingly you have to define your activities, you have to provide your service. You, you should not do like a PMC when you are uh, responsible as a DEC or you will not work as a DEC when you are responsible as a PMC because the scopes are entirely different. In case of PMC, you are the uh, you have the extended hand of your owner because the client, the contract, the uh, customer, they need some project management consultant because they don't have so much of time, they don't have so much of expertise in the field, domain expertise they don't have. That's why they recruit some PMC and the PMC is handed over all kind of responsibility, all kind of liability. That means they have to control the schedule of the entire project. They have to monitor the project. They have to approve, review the quality of each and every vendor drawings. They have to uh, witness the uh, performance guarantee test. And they have to uh, assist and provide assistance during pre-commissioning and commissioning assistance. Because, and, and if you are part of the industry contractor, that means if you are a process engineer, part of LSTA contractor, then your scope is similar to this DEC. Now, the different stages of engineering. Basic engineering, front end engineering, which is called feed. Whenever you will uh, go for any interview or any kind of uh, job opportunity, definitely you will see this kind of uh, terminologies being used uh, in everywhere. The basic engineering, front end engineering, design, retail engineering. So, what are these terminologies? The basic engineering, it is basically conceptual process studies, material balances, process proceeds, and preliminary plot plan, preliminary piping and instrument diagrams, definition and sizing of main equipments, resulting in process specifications, resolution of equipments. So, this is the scope of a basic engineering. You need not do the entire system. You have to do the conceptual part. You have to start the job and the fundamental concepts are defined at basic engineering. So after that, the, once the basic engineering is done, at that time, some uh, specialized field are there. In, in that case, the process licensor you have to recruit because there are some particular package in where the process know-how is only available from the process licensor. So in that case, the process licensor, they will provide the necessary data, necessary documents, and based on that, the basic engineering design package, BEDP, is prepared. 
and that is the part of the tender document and front end engineering it is mechanical data sheets of the main equipment starting from the process specifications during the bed and it is one step higher this front end engineering from the basic engineering design and their scope is like this they will develop this pnids they will also do all these activities uh, and they will prepare everything which is required for a detailed engineering team that means a contractor uh, lsta contractor for a lsta contractor whatever the detailed engineer uh, basic engineering inputs are required these are done by the field engineer in the field engineering and the detail engineering they will directly start from the purchasing of equipments based on the uh, uh, basic engineering or they they will also do a uh, prepare a pnid and other documents in more detailed format and the cost control startup procedure and ultimately they will do the commissioning of the process plan now the brief overview of the tendering process if we just look at this uh, steps then you will understand that how the tendering process is done depending upon the type of project and the schedule we have to split the different packages and the budgetary estimations of each package for uh, board approval is taken and uh, the technical specification and drawing preparation these are done then bill of quantity that means uh, what are the equipments you have to purchase and the numbers of each uh, number of equipments required and the scope of supply uh, scope of installation all these things are mentioned in this boq and then budgetary quotations from the prospective bidders are taken and based on that sor that means schedule of rates based on the quotations uh, we have to do some rate analysis and the sor is prepared and this is also part of the tender documents and the entire tender document is floated for the bidding purpose once the tender is floated then the prospective bidders they will uh, start quoting for this tender and before opening the tender one pre bid meeting is organized and for the uh, for resolution of various queries raised by the prospective bidders and after that the uh, tender is opened technical bid is opened and the bid evaluation is done and after that the uh, qualified bidders for the qualified bidders the price bid is opened and then take to commercial bid evaluation is done and the selection of bidder and award of contract to the selection of bidder this is the normal procedure which is followed for a tendering process these are the site related activities because uh, for the process engineering design project one part is the activity which is done in the design office by the entire design team and once the contractor uh, has been awarded the project that means the job they will be uh, they will be starting their activities at site that means uh, site activity will will have to be initiated and there will be another kick off meeting after the award of the contractor and then the time schedule of the activities all these things are done and these are the procedures how the contractors are mobilized at site and continuously from the design office you have to monitor the activities and you have to provide necessary support for the contractors whenever they require any modifications any kind of clarifications you have to provide the necessary drawing documents or uh, you have to resolution you have to provide the resolutions corresponding to the queries this is the overall project organization uh, for a process design project this is the uh, the uh, role of the project manager if you see the project manager is the person who is looking after the entire team the entire team then being uh, overall head of this project the project manager the process process selection process evaluation that means starting from the basic engineering the concept up to the commissioning any kind of activities the coordination between the contractors with the client the single point contact is the project manager that means whenever the job is awarded the project manager is uh, designated 
the project manager is designated and the designated project manager will act as a single point contact for any kind of resolution any kind of activity he will look after the entire team and uh, for a chemical engineering project the uh, having a chemical background if the project manager is having a chemical background chemical engineering background definitely they will have an added advantage these are the applicable standards and guidelines there are many standards and guidelines uh, you have to uh, study you have to continuous update yourself with the latest standard and guidelines which are which are available in the market and uh, i have just summarized i have just listed some guidelines which are uh, most commonly used for the process plan design these are yesd guideline oil industry safety directorate because whenever you are working uh, in the oil and gas industry these guidelines definitely be followed static electricity 110 yesd why is the 113 hazardous area classification so these are the guidelines because the basic engineering the basic design principle the formula or anything what what you have learned during your four years engineering course these are the fundamentals but based on the fundamentals these guidelines has been prepared so when you are coming in the industries you are coming in the consulting organizations we have to be acquainted with this kind of standards and guidelines and otherwise we will not be able to be a good chemical engineer the ysd standards other there are so many ysd standards are available and uh, pe periodically these are updated you must have the uh, latest version of the ysd standards these are all available in the library of the of any organization and uh, it is always Uh, you can you have the access there are some is standards is 557 to 15656 uh, these are all is standards indian standards api standards these are also used for various equipment sizing calculations uh, american standards there are some other standards specialized standards also there as are as a classification they are all useful very very useful now uh, almost i finished my uh, lecture just uh, for the further learning that means if you are if you are definitely uh, motivated and if you are uh, really interested for build up a good career in in the field of process design or in the field of chemical engineering then you should learn uh, some aspects so these are the uh, topics which i have selected here i have listed here for further learning one is process design fundamentals which are project documentations that means you have to prepare so many project documents design basis pnid pfd control philosophies all these things i have given the overview of these terminologies of this name of these documents and scope of these documents in this presentation but for a specialized part the process design fundamentals you have to have a good training you have to uh, take the attend the lectures like this kind of lectures so that you can learn how to prepare a process design basis what are the main content how to prepare a pnid how to prepare a process flow diagram then you can say that you have good skill you have good expertise then process hazard analysis mainly uh, i will say that hazard and qr this is the most important part there are so many uh, components of process hazard analysis but gradually you have to learn one by one but initially i will say that hazard and qr these two things are the most useful in the industry and it is always for any kind of project hazard and qr is required it is a must nowadays okay so pre project activities this is uh, pre feasibility report dfr eia these are also high demand because unless and until pre project activities are done the project cannot be initiated the offsite activities these are equally uh, useful as useful for the main process plan because offsite activities they are the, they provide the basic uh, support for the process plans so designing water treatment plan designing effluent treatment plan 
designing sewage treatment plants, it definitely requires some expertise. And uh, only few people, those who have uh, expertise, they can work in this field. Applications of standards and guidelines, because so many standards and guidelines are available in the market. Uh, nobody can uh, learn each and everything, but at least you can select some specific standards and guidelines. And at least you can know that where it is available. That means which for say you have to uh, you have to check you have to design a uh, petroleum oil terminal. Say for example, the storage of hazardous chemical like gasoline, kerosene, uh, diesel, all these things you have to store at a particular location and uh, you have to design that storage and handling plan. So for that purpose, which particular standard is applicable? YSD 244 is, is applicable for this. Uh, so at least you can learn, you can just study this YSD 244, how it is applied. And when, say for example, you have to develop the plot plan, then for plot plan, which standard is applicable? Which particular YSD applicable? Say you have to go for PSB sizing, pressure safety valve, you have to uh, calculate the pressure, the design, the pressure safety valve. Then which particular, uh, for the relief systems, there is some API standards, 521. So that you have to apply. So there are vent size calculation. For vent size calculation, we have to use YSD API 2000. Uh, so there are so many API standards and why is the standards are applicable. Uh, so nobody can say that uh, I know everything, but uh, gradually working, working in the industries, you will learn everything, but uh, you can have a snapshot of all the standards. That means the, which particular portion of the YSD standard, which particular portion of the API standard you should remember. And another thing is bioprocess engineering for chemical engineers because uh, it is a very good uh, topic, bioprocess engineering. Uh, and I think that uh, a chemical engineer uh, after BTEC, a chemical engineering, if he wants uh, to go for uh, uh, another uh, subject that is good option is biotechnology because there are a lot of applications uh, of chemical engineering uh, techniques or reaction kinetics, all these things in bioprocess engineering. And definitely the uh, bioprocess engineering is a good career options for chemical engineering students. Because nowadays the pharmaceutical industries, they are growing in the faster way. So if we have to work in the pharmaceutical industry, if you have to know the basic uh, design uh, criteria or design methodology for the wastewater treatment or water biological treatment of the wastewater or sewage treatment plant, then definitely you must have the knowledge of the uh, bioprocess engineering. Even the uh, non conventional uh, activity uh, design uh, sources of the fuel, like ethanol manufacturing and microbial fuel cell or waste to energy. These are all things, These all these things are uh, quite important at this stage. Uh, and the chemical, for chemical engineering students, it is a definitely a challenging field. So bioprocess engineering will be a good choice for study. Okay, finally, I have concluded my presentation. And if you have any questions, you can ask or, uh, or you can send mail through this mail ID. Uh, and uh, if you have any feedback also, uh, you can share through the feedback form. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful session, informative session. I have got a few questions from the students. Uh, the first question is that how do we decide the plant site? Like you showed the diagram out, uh, uh, out, outside and there was a railway track nearby it for the transportation. So, what, how do we decide the plant, plant location or the plant site? Um, regarding the feedback, you can share the feedback uh, to uh, the students' film, and if they have any feedback, they can share. Uh, and the queries also, they can directly uh, send the queries to the mail ID also. And I am always available, and the phone number is also available. Okay, okay. I will, I will share okay. this information with the students and they will contact you for the queries and other 
information if they need. Yes, and I will definitely thank Parul University for uh, arranging this platform for knowledge sharing to the young learners. And definitely, I think this will be very much helpful for uh, chemical engineering students and other disciplines also. And in future, I will expect that this kind of activity should be done. Uh, this kind of webinars should be arranged for the young learners. And definitely, this will create a bridge between the academy and the industries. Yes, sir. Definitely. Thank you so much, sir, for your time and the knowledge. I would like to thank you from by the thank you from the side of chemical department and parliament. Thank you, sir. Thank you.